Chris's Crazy Fury. One more time, Let's end of the it. breach for the <laughs> Shitmiro <laughs> series. So it brought, like you said, it brought it all back to the where it all started. And this must be a significant moment because this is where kind of the climax of the movie takes place, right? So can you are you able to see the screen? Uh, we will do it now. Perfect. Awesome. Let's make us bigger. Aha. Awesome. So this is the Santiago, right? And I started, you know, realizing. So he says here, one million will look like a bargain. He's having this negotiation with this guy who, you know, the first time I watched the movie, I was kind of assuming, you know, was just making a deal to purchase a lot of shark, probably for like a wholesaler for a restaurant. Great white sharks are endangered. By the way, by my... Soup as a delicacy, I think you pay something like a thousand dollars a serving. Right. So by my calculations, over 90% of the shark in the Sharknado franchise have been great white sharks. There's a few hammerheads here and there. There's uh, the occasional swordfish. But if you look at it, most of them, and I did the numbers, I crunched those numbers, were over 90% great white sharks, which, as you're alluding to, are, are a delicacy, right? So that was my initial thought the first time we watched this, is that they're making a deal for, you know, the restaurant industry on the black market, right? So he says to uh, to this guy, um, a pot of 20,000 sharks are migrating in this direction, all right? So we're, the audience is caught up with uh, what we're talking about here and then he uh, eventually negotiates 500,000 of course he pulls the gun on him and then they have to settle at a million but even 500,000 I was wondering was that a good deal and would that make sense if it was for a restaurant like wholesale or something like that so great white sharks even back in 2013 were endangered you know, it's illegal to buy it from a fisherman. So I started to do some uh, investigation as to the actual value of a great white shark if you're buying it from a fisherman like this. Mm -hmm. So according to exoticmeatmarket.com, by the way, I urge you to use extreme caution when you're when you're typing that into your browser. Let's just say, <laughs> let's just say I, went on an eight, I went on an eight hour tangent and then eventually I got to the right website. But listen. That's not important right now. So eight hours later, I figured out exoticmeatmarket.com will show you that to purchase uh, a great white shark from a fisherman like this really depends on the size you know, of, of the fish, of course, but it starts at $150 and can go up from there. And then, of course, like you said, you could probably get up to a thousand when you're actually the restaurant, but 150 to buy it. Let's go crazy. And let's say that the sharks are bigger than than average, as we've mm -hmm. seen in the movie. So let's say a thousand shark. So 20,000 sharks would be about $200,000. Why is this guy willing to pay 500000 We all know the restaurant industry has very, very uh, small profit margins. If you're paying two and a half times the going rate to buy all these sharks to sell them in your restaurants, you're not going to make any money. You're going to lose actually quite a lot of money. So why is this guy willing to pay $500,000? Um, yes, I did mention the script I'll take writers. questions from the audience. I, I did mention the script writers, yeah. <laughs> like, but, they're not uh, even coherent sentences. So do you think anyone can operate a calculator? Am I... this is real this has really happened picture this we're in this moment and this guy who's real is paying five hundred thousand. i think what's actually going on is he's is not it buying it what's that was it yen <laughs> well it could have been yen no 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 <laughs> five, this guy is... five hundred thousand pesos <laughs> No, I think this guy is actually an arms dealer. And I have some more proof I could show you. So he says, I do believe we have a deal. All right. Does this look like a sane restaurant wholesaler? <laughs> is this the sa a sane restaurant wholesaler who's looking to purchase sharks for the purpose of um, distribution? Having worked in the food industry for a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. The job kind of does that to people. <laughs> Do you know most alcoholics and drug addicts are shares? <laughs> that could be true. I have more proof for you then. You need more proof. <laughs> so when he shows up now, they go back to the moment, and Santiago says, who are you and what are you doing here? Are Hang, you on a minute. Hang on a minute. Yeah, go if ahead. You're, if you're trying to make a fun movie, right, and Ian yeah. Zering turns up, would you not pull a gun out of two? <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck run, Hebo? 
<laughs> That's a good point. On the bank. But listen to this line. This was very key. Are you with Palmer and came to kill me? He knows the guy by his first name all of a sudden. He's, de- he's done other deals with him before. And he's assuming, have you come to kill me? He's assuming some sort of, uh, you know, violent uh, altercation. Why would you assume that if you're just dealing with a guy looking to purchase, you know, food for a restaurant wholesaler? So there's more to this, this relationship between this guy and the other guy who freaked out and pulled the gun on him. Then later... He goes into the back and he says, we have these uh, weapons to fight the sharks. Does this look like a fisherman to you, good sir? I just love the fact that the chainsaw is above the M60. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) But look at all these weapons. This is not a fisherman. This is an arms dealer. And why now? That's the big next question, of course. Why would an arms <laughs> dealer? Bad. What what third world uh, war or Japan combat capable chainsaws? <laughs> well, why would he buy sharks if he's an arms dealer? Right. I think the Chinese government is working on drones and we have some history some history why would they use sharks let's well let's see americans have a history of being afraid of sharks back to jaws of course and uh if you're going to make a drone why not make it look like a predator that's something that uh, is innately fearful to the american public we have a history of arming our nuclear weapons as sharks so why not turn the tables on us and develop sharks that are drones and have you know that same uh, intimidating factor uh, as a delivery system for weaponry. We get another clue that this is the case in the future. I think what actually happened here as we look at this evolved robot shark is this is actually what the uh, Chinese scientists were developing. And this is their robot shark in the future. They, I think the one... They yes? wouldn't be embarrassed by making that. The, the, <laughs> whoever made that would get fired. <laughs> well, that's true. Someone was fired. <laughs> <laughs> but before they were fired, this is the the realization of all those purchases. The one problem, as we've seen from the Terminator franchise and, of course, from other examples, is that when you make a weapon, you want it to be uh, intelligent, of course. You don't want it firing on friendly fire. And when you add the intelligent... Yes. Oh, they're not Americans. Sorry. Right. They're it's not Americans. Chinese got not the American government. You do friendly fire. Your fucking biggest hobby is friendly fire. You invented friendly fire. Well, listen, I can't speak for every American, but listen, so I think this is actually what happened is that they built these shark drones and this is the evolution of those. However, I think they became self-aware and that's the problem when you're making weaponry with artificial intelligence. We've seen that with Terminator and other franchises. So when they became self-aware, they are now controlled by April a robot April in the future for thousands of years and they're slaves basically and they realize that they have to once this time travel possibility comes into play they realize that they now have to go back in time to where it all started and where it all started you got it big trouble in little China indeed that was another clue is to go back to where it all started in the beginning and that is Santiago ship. So they're going back in time to stop this transaction before it can take place because this is where it all began. And if you kids are playing at home and you want to guess what the name of my theory is, say it with me. Ready? One, two, three. The Chinese government tried to purchase 20,000 sharks in order to weaponize them into AI shark drones, which backfired by causing the future sentient sharks who were slaves to the Aprils to travel back in time to the moment the purchase was to take place. And AI sharks straight into shark natives in revenge against humanity. You guessed it. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be some title. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <sighs> so it was a Chinese bot. It was a Chinese bot all along. There we started. go. <laughs> <laughs> that still makes more sense in this freaking movie. 